This is Rostra, the St. Theodore Guerin Junior Classical League podcast, where we bring the lessons of classical study into the light for the benefit of all. Welcome back to another episode of Rostra. Uh, and to a repeat guest, I'm not sure, Stella, how many times have you done Rostra? Has this got to be at least the third? This might be the fourth. Maybe, maybe, maybe the fourth episode, so yes. you, you may be familiar <clears throat> Excuse me, with uh, the name Stella Kolb. And Stella, you've got a topic here that I was just saying to you before we started recording. Uh, it's so right up your alley. It, it, is, it is, hits very close to home for you and your interests and so forth. So start off. What is your topic? Um, ancient Roman saints, specifically martyrs. I have three today that I would really like to highlight. Fabulous. So Roman saints, but and, and especially, especially focusing on martyrs. And I say that because, uh, I say this right up your alley, because you are uh, such a strong person in your faith, yet you're also interested in the Roman history stuff, and so just a perfect alignment of interests and, and pursuits and so forth. So... Uh, Definitely talk to us. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some questions here um, okay. uh, because it's such a fascinating topic. Uh, but you've got three, so go ahead and talk mm -hmm. to us. Okay. I chose St. Agnes, St. Florian, and St. Philomena. Um, all three of them were martyrs, all under the Emperor Diocletian, actually, which I found out that he killed about 3,000 3, Christians in general. Um, St. Agnes and St. Philomena both died when they were about 12 years old, tortured to death, and very brutal ways. Um, they both took a vow to Christ saying, I don't want to get married. Typically, an emperor, Diocletian himself, in Philomena's case, had her specifically tortured. Um, so just seeing how young that they were and then all that they went through. As you mentioned those two yes. uh, and a little bit about them, go ahead and mention the third and then okay. we're gonna, we'll, we'll dig a little deeper. Okay. Um, Florian was actually a Roman soldier, a commander, and... Um, Rome said, go kill all the Christians, and he said, no, I'm a Christian myself, and um, he was actually burned to death, and, or not, almost to death, they said, um, he said to them, what did he say, something like, I dare you to throw me into the fire, and then they put him in the fire, and he didn't burn to death, so then they drowned him. And, and, so, and he was also, this was during the time of Diocletian? Yes. Okay, so why is this that you have this really violent and brutal opposition uh, to this one group of people called Christians in that time period, especially Diocletian. He wasn't the only one uh, who persecuted uh, Christians. Uh, obviously, there were other Roman emperors as well. Why do you think that was? Just because the Christians were so completely different to Roman life, and they were already a really brutal people anyway, so... Just which to be that way. Which is kind of, you know, I think a lot of times we look back at the Romans and we see, you know, the beautiful architecture. We talk about some of the really great philosophy, some of the amazing uh, literature and poetry and so forth. Obviously, an advanced civilization and truly civilized in, in those areas. Mm -hmm. And yet, you mentioned the brutality. You've also got the same culture that gives us gladiator shows where people are killing each other for, for other people's entertainment. Um, so you, you've got the brutality right alongside the, the civility. And, and that seems, I think, to us, probably in the modern age, a bit of a contradiction. But obviously it wasn't. It, you, you just had that. Um, you say that the Christians were different. How so? Um, just in the way that they were peaceful about things and just had a completely different outlook on basically everything. Very much a different outlook on everything. And especially when it came to, obviously, religion. Um, you've got this this monotheistic mm -hmm. uh, religion going on in that regard, obviously uh, similar to uh, to the Jews. But you've also got the unwillingness, uh, and we'll come back to to Florian, especially as a soldier here. Um, but the unwillingness for some of them to participate in some of these things that are part of the culture, like going to watch the gladiator shows, but even more significantly, worshiping the emperor as a god. Mm -hmm. Most other cultures are not going to have a problem with that because they were already polytheistic. Right? Once one more god, we got a bunch already, go ahead and worship the, the Roman emperor as a deity. No problem. Christians really couldn't do that. Jews really couldn't do that uh, because of their monotheistic beliefs. And so, yeah, you're right. I think there's quite a bit of odds there. 
Um, talk to us about Florian. Uh, do, do you know, and I will be honest, I really do not know his story. So you, you may have some information here. Uh, do you know how it was he came to the Christian faith as a Roman soldier? Um, I do know that he was a convert. He was actually killed in what's modern day Austria area. Okay. Um, but he was just a convert to the faith. There's not a whole lot about him. Got but it. Got it. Again, very difficult mm -hmm. if you're going to be a Roman soldier, right? And so you're pledging your allegiance to your general uh, and then to your emperor and, and this kind of thing. And, and then this guy, and, and he wasn't alone as being a Christian uh, soldier, but uh, very, very difficult to try to live those out. And obviously mm -hmm. he, uh, he paid the ultimate price. Do you know, is there any, at the time, was there any particular uh, uh, pushback or negative reaction with the young ladies and, and what they suffered? Was there any kind of a, a reaction um, among the general people? Because obviously, it's bad enough that Florian mm -hmm. suffered what he suffered. But then when you start thinking about younger people, really children in, in, in mm -hmm. the ages you're talking about there, uh, most people recognize that is just heinous. That is just just wicked by any any standard. Uh, was there any kind of pushback against that? Did you find or anything? Um, not really anything that I looked at in particular, but I mean, I'm sure that there was just well, some, and, some, hopefully, right? Well, and you say hopefully because you, we don't know. And the other thing is there may not have been because people would have also been reasonably scared of the emperor, yeah. right? And so uh, you think about other uh, dictators in modern history and so forth mm -hmm. where uh, even good people may not speak up just out of fear Obviously, if, if this guy's willing to do that to these children, oh my word, what might he do to me? Mm -hmm. And and so so you have that. Um, question for you. Yes. Why do you think that people, and, and I will say, obviously I think this is true for, for, for Christians a lot, but not even just Christians. Why do you think people are drawn to stories of martyrdom? Why, why is that such, and I want to be careful, I say it's appealing, not in uh, uh, like, oh, you really like that, obviously, is, is a horrible thing, but we're drawn to those stories. We, we are, we're interested. Um, we, in, in some ways, are glad to hear about those stories. I was not glad that the event happened, but uh, why do you think people are drawn to that? Um, well, first, I guess I wanted to circle, around, circle back around and say that St. Philomena wasn't actually Roman born. She was a Greek princess, but okay. I just thought that I would say that. Just Oh, sure. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Clear, clear that detail up. Yeah. But really, I think that just the way in which some of them died, um, like St. Philomena first, they whipped her, then they tried to kill her with arrows, and then they tried to kill her in all these different ways, and none of them were working. So yeah. seeing God's presence and even their deaths. Okay. Um, and then just seeing how much people will sacrifice for God, too. See, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, obviously, there's the fascinating, again, not in the sense of entertaining, really, but, but the sense of, of fascinating, obviously, ways of that, that people suffered and died, and, and, and we're kind of interested in that. But also the what people are willing to sacrifice uh, for their beliefs, uh, all the way to the point of actually giving up their lives and saying, you know, no, I'm not going to do this. Um, it, it, it's a great... Great reminder uh, to us, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, who often have a much easier life um, to, to see what other people were willing willing to go through. Uh, now, you mentioned you said three. You're bringing out three today. Mm -hmm. um, and and perhaps, hopefully, maybe, I don't know, we can entice you to come back and, and talk about this again sometime. Uh, but you said you mentioned three out of just under Diocletian. You said about 3,000? Yes. Was he the worst in terms of this that you have run across in terms of Roman emperors, um, in terms of that sort of persecution? It seems like it. I feel like yeah. when I'm reading about saints, that his name comes up the most. Sometimes Nero, but right, right. So a lot, a lot of people yes. think about Nero, but honestly, more under more under Diocletian. Mm -hmm. And then you know these things kind of, as I say, wax and wane. You have some some emperors that were more open, more receptive. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, not just Christian faith, but different faiths as well. And then you cut swing back again, you got these people that, that are really just, just, just such hardliners there. Um, so kind of a wrap-up question for you, or maybe one, one or two here, mm -hmm. uh, but why did you want to pick this topic to share on Rostra? Um, 
Well, I think it's really important for people to know about the different saints and all what they went through. And like you said, just kind of how we have it easier now. And even just all of the miracle stories that have happened in, um, with the saints and after their deaths. I mean, St. Philomena was actually taken off the modern church calendar because the Pope wanted to um, keep people away from superstition because there were so many miracles happening with her. Oh, wow. People started to get superstitious about her. Um, yeah. But I guess just seeing all how they work in our lives, even though that, that was 2,000 years ago. You have a tendency to say things that take me exactly where I want to go in the next comment or question. <laughs> it's just fabulous. It's almost like you're reading my mind. Um, I think it's such a neat topic because I think for a lot of people, we read ancient history and it occupies a certain place in our brains. Mm -hmm. And then there is maybe your faith or modern life or whatever. And those all occupy separate places in your brain. And yet you realize there is this grand overlap. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I like about this topic. Here you've got the overlap of the ancient studies right along with the faith, mm -hmm. which obviously people are still talking about these saints today. So really you've kind of got that modern connection just all completely overlaps, uh, which is why I really appreciate you uh, appreciate you doing this topic. So yeah, well, hopefully we can get you back sometime and we can talk about some more um, uh, press saints and perhaps even martyrs. Thank you for listening to Rostra. You may check out all our episodes on Spotify and follow us on social media at Garen JCL. That's at G-U-E-R-I-N-J-C-L.